Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are doing well today and hope you're ready to learn a little bit more on how to actually code in Swift 4. In today's video, I'm pretty excited to uh, kind of talk to you guys about how to parse JSON very, very easily using just one line of code. So we're going to do this in Swift 4 using something called a decodable protocol. And it's going to make your code very, very simple and also a super, super straightforward. And along the way, it's also going to make your code very, very easy to maintain. And you guys know how much I like to talk about code maintainability. So let's get started today with a quick, quick example as to what we can do with JSON. And then we'll dive straight into the parsing exercises. OK, so let's kind of look at what we have on the screen. And we have the Chrome browser on the left side with some JSON right here. Uh, it's pretty complicated, and we'll talk about this in just a bit. Let's look at the app in the simulator, which is uh, something that we built out in early 2016, I believe. And it is very similar to the App Store that everyone should be very, very familiar with. Okay, so if you want to check it out, uh, make sure to <laughs> dig through the archives of this channel, and you should be able to find it. And basically, we were able to build out this entire app using this JSON on the left side. So you see banner category enhanced with 3D touch. It's this icon right here. And to build out the list down below, best new apps and best new games, we have this categories array, which is best new apps right there. And then best new games like that, which is this guy. So right off the bat, you'll notice that the JSON here is pretty complicated. We have this chunk and then we have this chunk. And so to parse all of this out, we had to write a lot of JSON parsing code. So that's not always all that hard, but it's not that fun either. So today's video, I want to show you guys how to parse out this entire bit using just one, one line of code, and it's going to be very, very easy. So before we can kind of learn how to do this, let's start out with something very, very simple, which is at this URL right here, uh, api.letsbuildthatapp.com slash json decodable slash course. And this represents a very simple uh, course object with an ID, a name, a link, and an image URL. So I want to show you how to parse this out right now using this app that I have in the back, which is just a single view application. I'm just going to run it to show you that it does absolutely nothing. So we just get a white screen, and we're kind of ready to look at what we want to do here. So we have this uh, course model object. And typically, when you're parsing out JSON inside of your app, you have a model object that reflects what that JSON is. So let's just create this uh, model object called course. And inside, it has some kind of ID of int. And then it has you know, these other properties, such as name, link, and image URL. So let me type that out real fast with a let name be a type string. Let's uh, link be of type string as well. And finally, URL, image URL, be of type string like so. All right, so what can I do with this guy? Well, you can run a very, very simple example down here with perhaps let my course equals this course object with this constructor that Swift gives you automatically. And let's just use one and perhaps my course and then some link and then some image URL. Finally, to kind of show you guys what this does, I will print it out uh, with a print statement and run the application now. And then down below, we see the description as to what this course is right here. So pretty good stuff. And now that we are ready with this course model object, let's take a look at how to actually fetch this bit of data at this URL. So let me just copy that. So uh, Command-C. And then let's see down here, I will say, Perhaps let JSON URL string equals all of that. And perhaps we need the S right there. And so what can we do? Well, we actually need to execute some kind of URL session to fetch this data from the internet. And you need to say URL session dot shared data task with this completion handler. And this URL, we need to construct it right above. So let me say uh, let URL equals this URL with this constructor. And let's see, down here we have this string constructor. I'll use the JSON URL string from above. And then right here, you can just fill this out with this URL. All right, for the completion handler, just hit enter, and then fill out these first three parameters with data and perhaps response and ERR for the error. It doesn't exactly matter what you call it, but 
Now you want to, you know, perhaps check ERR and then also, you know, perhaps check uh, response status of 200 OK. So just type that out. And then you are kind of ready to start doing stuff. So do stuff here. And the last bit of code that you need to type out is to actually hit dot resume on this URL session so you make sure you fire it off. Okay, so good stuff. And there's this error right here about fixing this URL because it's not unwrapped yet. So to do this correctly, let's just use a guard let optional binding. And if that doesn't work, we just return out of viewed it load. So I'm gonna run this app now and perhaps put a line, a breakpoint on line 29. And you'll see that it hits the breakpoint right now. And there it is, hit the continue. We get the do stuff here, print statement right below. So really good stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove this print statement right there and actually see what we can do with this data object that we get back from this URL session call. So I want to show you guys how to print out this data as a string with a string constructor like so. And let's construct it using perhaps this data guy. And we need to get an a non-optional version of this data right there. So I'm going to use guard let optional binding again, guard let data equals data, otherwise we will return. And then we fill this guy with that data. And encoding hit dot, and you should be able to get UTF-8. All right, so let's print out what data as string is right now by running the application and you will get this warning, but down below, we'll get the optional string of the bit of JSON that we're looking at right here, ID, name, and link, and image URL, like so. All right, so to make this example a little bit more interesting, let me show you how much work it takes to parse out JSON using the methods of Swift 2 and Swift 3. So let's say right here, what we need to do is to uh, kind of serialize this data object up here into some kind of JSON object using JSON serialization and use the uh, method call of JSON object with some kind of data. And then right here, the options is perhaps mutable containers. And then right here, you can actually perhaps print out what this JSON guy is. And if you try to build this, it actually doesn't work because you need to handle this uh, potential error with a do catch and a try. So do catch perhaps let json error and then you need to put all of this inside of the do and then right here you can just say try and i will comment out those two lines and run the code right now so if i put a breakpoint on line 37 it will hit this right there hit the continue and then we get the actual serialized uh, bit of data in this format like so and it just pretty much represents what we have right here Okay, so good stuff. And inside of this catch, we should actually print out, you know, error uh, serializing uh, JSON and then perhaps hit a comma and JSON error like so. All right, so what we can do now is to use this JSON somehow and construct the course object that we need, which looks like that. And the course object is this course struct up here. So the way the traditional uh, JSON parsing looks like is you first create some kind of constructor using an init like that and use the JSON of perhaps string to any. And then down here you would say uh, ID equals JSON and you would just use the ID string to access the, uh, the dictionary or the ID inside of this dictionary and you would cast it into an int and you would otherwise give it some kind of default value if it's not able to do so. And then you would do the same thing with the name of equals JSON and perhaps name as string and you would default it to some kind of empty string. And then finally, you need to do all this for all the properties inside of this struct. So I'm just going to do this rather quickly, build and everything should be fine, okay? So once you have that constructor, you can just say let course equals course and just use the JSON that you serialize from line 43. And then finally, you can print out what course.name is perhaps. And then finally, when you try to build your project, you get this error where you need to cast this JSON object into a string to any guy like that. So I'm gonna do this the safe way of 
using a guard let and let's just cast this to a string to any otherwise we return you can run the project now put a breakpoint on line 46 and then you see exactly what this course object is down here so course is right here and it was able to parse it successfully into the id name link and image url which you see name is instagram firebase and that's exactly what that is all right so this is the more traditional way of performing json parsing using swift 2 swift 3 and also objective c let me just write that here swift 2 3 and objective c and while i'm at it let me just comment all of that code out and show you guys how much easier it's gotten by using a little bit of magic with Swift 4 and also Xcode 9 beta right here. And the first thing I want to do is to say let course equals some kind of object using JSON decoder and let's use an empty constructor. And now we can decode this object by calling decode, which expects some kind of type of decodable dot protocol. And then on the right side right here, this data is the exact same thing that we used before. So let's just paste that in there. And the question now is what the heck is this decodable protocol? Well, JSON decoder is actually very, very simple to use. And all you need to do is to feed in the model object that you're trying to uh, parse your JSON into. So the way it works is first, you have to conform your model object to this decodable protocol. And then down here in the decode method, you just pass in course.self. And then in the very front right here, you wanna make sure you hit a try because decode can actually potentially throw you an error. And then you can automatically right here, call course.name inside of your print statement. And I'll put a breakpoint on line 44 and run the application to show you exactly what we get. Okay, so JSON decoder has decoded everything inside of our data into this course object right here with the ID of one, Instagram, Firebase, and name, the link, and the image URL. So really, really easy stuff. And it kind of uh, allows us to remove some more code, which is up here. So I'm gonna go ahead, uh, go ahead and remove the initializer inside of our course model object and rerun the application to show you we don't need this constructor anymore. What is kind of happening underneath the hood is that this course right here, JSON decoder, is actually able to decode it by simply setting up all the properties automatically based on what is inside of this JSON object. So as long as your properties match up with what is in the actual JSON blob, you should be okay. All right, so that's how it works inside of Swift 4 now. And it's much, much easier. You can just add in properties that you perhaps will add in later when your JSON becomes you know, even more complicated. So let's now move on to something a little bit more difficult and move on to the second tab right here. So the URL is exactly the same, but this is now courses. And let me just pull this up a little bit so you can see. And instead of having just one course, which looks like this, we now have an array of courses. So as you can imagine, this is a little bit more difficult, but using Swift 4, this is also very, very simple. And we just have to make a minor modification to the decoding process and pass it an array of course instead of just a simple course. So let's go down here, JSON decoder, decode, and put in right here a bracket and a bracket like that. And now we can print out what courses is. So let me just rename the variable to courses and we will get an array of courses when we print out this down below. But instead we get this error and the reason is because we haven't exactly changed the URL yet. So let me just put in an S right there and we will now parse out the JSON that is coming back to us in this array form, which now looks like this. So you see course ID name, Instagram, Firebase, and then this other course right here with ID two and Kindle basic training which are this, uh, these two courses right here, ID1, ID2, and the name, link, and image URL, like so right here. And now the final thing I wanna show you how to do is to parse out an even more complicated JSON blob, which is this right here, website description. And this JSON object has a name, has a description right here, and then a courses array like this, which contains the two previous courses inside of this array right here. So how do we do this very, very easily using Swift 4? Well, let me show you right here. 
And the first thing we need to do is to construct some kind of model object that has this structure. So let me use another struct, which I will construct up here. And let's say struct, and let's use website description. And what kind of properties do we need? Well, let me just use name, description, and courses. So let's see, let name be of type string, let description be of type string, and let courses be of something. Well, this something is going to be an array of courses like so. And that's exactly what that needs to be. And I'm going to modify the URL first. So website description. Let me just paste that into this URL for the JSON URL. And then down at the very bottom, all you have to do is to either modify this or you can type out something else. So let me just comment that out. And let's just do this one more time. Website description equals JSON decoder empty constructor decode. And we need to pass in the type of website description. Let me type out the capitalized class and dot self and then use the data from above. So if you try to build this, it doesn't work yet because website description needs to conform to the decodable protocol. So let's do that one more time for this struct. So let's use decodable. And now you should be able to run your project, build. I believe we need a try right there. Let's print out what website description is. And I will, let's say, use name, uh, website description, like so. I print it out to see what we get down below. So let's see right there. Let's build that app. Teaching building apps since 1999, which are these two properties right here, name and description. You can also print out the courses if you wish to do so. All right, so that's pretty good. And one last thing I wanna kind of warn you about is that sometimes with a JSON uh, blob such as this, sometimes it might not contain all of the properties that you're expecting. So for example, you can have certain JSON blobs that are missing fields. So this is courses underscore missing fields. And sometimes your courses might not have an ID or a link or an image URL such as this last course right here, so this Yelp course. So the idea is in order to kind of cope with this problem, you have to actually do something else that's a little bit strange with your struct objects, but it's also uh, pretty simple. So let me just copy this chunk and see what happens when I try to parse that. So I'm just going to replace website description with course missing fields. And let me comment out this guy. And basically this is an array of courses. So I'm going to use the courses decoder right here and try to print out what the decode does. And instead of having it work, it's actually going to fail because the JSON is missing some properties. So it says key not found when expecting non-optional type int for coding key ID. Basically it's saying that this Yelp course is missing an ID. So how do we actually fix that? All you have to do is to make your properties optional int, optional string like so, and rerun the application and it should be able to parse all of the missing properties correctly down below. So you see this right here, and then the final course is just ID nil, name is Yelp, link is nil, and image URL is nil, and that kind of reflects what you have inside of this JSON blob. All right, so JSON parsing now has become super, super easy to perform, and you probably no longer need all of those special CocoaPod libraries that you're used to using. Also, the links to all of the JSON URLs that I showed you today is available now in the description below, as well as the source code for today's project in today's video. And if you're really, really interested in finding out how the JSON parsing works in the App Store application that I showed you in the beginning, you can find the source code in the description as well. And finally, make sure to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already for more videos like this. And I will hopefully see you in the next video. Bye-bye, guys.